Don, the art professor here. I'm going to be showing you today how to make some Christmas ornaments pretty much from scratch. Now, these are Victorian reproductions made by me. The artwork in the center of these are actual 1870s die cuts that I have in my personal collection. I'm going to give you some scans down below of these so you can just download a copy of these exact same pieces of art, the angel part here. You can print them off on cardstock and then you can cut them out and you can work right along with the video itself. Now this smaller one here, everything you see in here other than the angel is something you can get locally. You'll have to make it, you'll have to address the colors because these are just pieces of paper, some bottle cleaners and a few other things. But literally the end of the day, these look very nice and very professional. I've seen these similar styles, not exactly like my styles, but similar ones selling at bazaars and Christmas festivals. I've also seen them on eBay, Etsy, and homemade by Amazon too. So let me show you the larger one as well. Here's the larger of them here. Again, everything in here is store-bought, painted by me, glued together, other than the angel on this one. Again, they look very professional, something you could see selling at local bazaars, as I said. All of these items are something that I have done for many, many years and have been very successful at it. Now, this is just the first part of this series. I'm going to show you in several videos how to make a wide range of ornaments, including decorating ones to look like vintage glass. And I'm also going to show you how to do some Dresden embossing at home with very little techniques involved, no real skill involved to make these as well. So if you want to know how to make it, just watch the video and I will show you. Now, let's just talk just for a minute about what they did to make Christmas ornaments in the Victorian era. Now, they were mostly just bought pieces that were put together. Now, this is what's called Dresden, and it's just designating a place where most of this stuff was made. This was made in Dresden, Germany. This is an original chicken from circa 1870 or 1880. Now, if you don't know, I do have another channel, and I sell tens of thousands of Victorian original paper items all the time. So these are things that I deal with constantly, and I do do recreations and things for friends and things like that. Now, this is Dresden as well. It's a die-cut frame, and all of these types of items would be used to make Christmas ornaments, even this piece here. And again, these are all from 1870s. These are the real deal, and we're going to recreate these parts here. And we're also going to use some original die cuts from the Victorian era. These were printed, these are original, embossed die cuts from the 1870s. I'm going to have a link down below so you can download a copy of these exact ones and then cut them out yourself so you can do the exact same ones I'm going to show you. Now to start with, we're going to show you the easiest ways to do the Dresden. Now these are doilies, 35 count, it says $1.99, it was actually half off, so I paid a dollar for 35 of these. These don't look like much yet, but we're going to show you how to turn these into Dresden, and they come in different sizes. Here is a large size here, and different designs also. This is just another manufacturer of them. There's probably 10 or 15 that you can get locally, I would imagine. Cake decorating supplies will have a lot of these. But what we're going to do with these right here is we're going to paint them. We're going to use some Krylon paint. I've got a silver chrome finish and then a metallic gold foil finish. Now, I know you can buy some of these already done and ready to go, but they're too glossy. They don't look correct enough, in my personal opinion. But I like to make my own and use the paint here. You can paint a thin coat and make it look like it's worn a little bit. So what I do is I've just went out and spray painted these with that same paint, both sides. These look pretty close to Dresden in all honesty. 
Uh, it makes them a little thicker, and it doesn't have to necessarily be thick. But I, again, I just spray painted a few of them here. And then I also will cut out the center on some of these. I use these type of scissors here, and I will just cut off in between these little tiny perforations all the way around. And then it looks more uh, decorative as well, too. So you can mix and match these also, and then cut out the centers as I, sh I showed you. And then there's also different sizes of these, as I said, and we saw some before. Here's some other ones that we've just, again, these are all just spray painted with that paint. It works very well on this. We've cut some out, same thing here. It makes two different styles of designs. And again, I don't worry if these get a little worn because it has that age look to it when you do that. Now in a future video, I may show you how to make these look like the originals age-wise because there's a trick to it. You can actually make these look very close to official Dresden. And again, these are just those four different designs. I've just cut them out. I've spray painted them in two different colors. And as you see, as I said, we've cut them out to make these frameworks. Very fancy already, it looks like in my book. So. You know, and you end up with these centerpieces here, which can be used in the middle of other ones. And let me just get you the last size here. Same basic thing. I've cut out some of the centers. You see I've done them in several different colors. Here's some more. As you see, I cut out centers. So I've got many different pieces and styles that we can mix and match to make. So with just a few bucks and some spray paint, you can make your own Dresden style. And again, the originals were made out of just pieces, just like this, that people put together. We're not trying to direct copy them. And back in the day, the Victorian ones were just individually done. Whatever the person wanted to put together was what they put together. There's no right or wrong way to make some of these ornaments. Let's show you something else that we're going to do. In fact, let me show you another way to add some designs. Now these are the cupcake holders. And if you open them up flat, you can get this basic shape here. And then you can take some of these and make a pattern with it, something like that. Or you can take the gold one here, put the piece right over the top. And then you could use an angel or something like that in the center of this as like a halo like that. And if you wanted to step it up a little bit, let's see here, let me grab something else. We can grab something like this, and that's basically a, a start to a Victorian Christmas ornament right there. So we're going to show you a little bit more with paper what you can do with them in just a moment here. Now I also have these here, which are a chenille stem. These work just fine. It's basically the same thing they would have had back in the Victorian era. Now let me show you something else here that we're going to do. Now this is another piece of paper that I made. This is just paper. I've spray painted one side gold and one side silver so I can see what I want to do. Now here's another one that I did. This is another just a little simple fan in one side gold and one side silver. That way you have two different options to make these right here. There's nothing to it in all honesty. Let's just take some paper and I'm going to show you real quick how to make these. We're just going to take two sheets of paper together, and we're just going to choose some random size here. Just going to cut it randomly across. Now, I don't want them super huge, so we're going to cut it down. And again, I got two sheets of paper here to do this with, two sheets. And then all we're going to do is we're going to fold it back and forth, straight across. One direction and back and forth, back and forth. That's all we're going to be doing with this. And then if there's anything sticking over, we're just going to cut it off. And then we've got two of these. We're just going to take them apart. And then you want to fold it over so it's right there folded and the ends are touching. Just like that. That's all you're going to do. And that's what's going to create this here. Because then you simply glue these two pieces together. Well, let's straighten this up just a little bit. Again, it's paper. You can't really go wrong with this. So you glue this together, and that's what you have right there. You've got this piece right here ready to go. Again, I've spray painted this, so that's about the only difference. And if you take a couple of these, let me just 
fold it on the same spot, make sure it's lined up. So once we get these folded, we're just going to take a little bit of hot glue. Let me fix that fold right there. Just take a little bit of hot glue, fold it in the center, and then just fold it up. That's all you do. Now when we're done, we'll be able to open this up, and there's part of it right there. There's half of it, just as I showed you. So that's literally all there is to making this right here. So, And you can make it as big or as long or however you want. If it's not quite lined up and you messed it up a little bit, just snip it down a little bit if you want. You can take another one here. And again, we're just going to fold it up to that line. Good thing hot glue, it dries and cools off so quick. And to make this one here, it's just several of them glued together. So let's just take a couple of these. Now you can glue them together any way you want. I just usually use the hot glue. It's quick, it's easy, you're done in just a matter of moments. Just line them up. If you've got a little blob on the end, just rub your finger and that'll kind of mash them together there. And that's literally all there is to it. You can make these go all the way around. You can turn them into a disc like this. Um, however you want it to look, you just add another one on if you want it more advanced. But then you just paint it when you're done. That's it. That's all I've done with these. So this is the basis for all of the ornaments here. And then I just took some of this cardstock here and I spray painted this as well gold and silver. And then from here, I cut out discs that I could use for backing. So I just took a lid for this big one here, and I drew a pencil line all the way around the lid, and then I cut those out. That's all I did for those ones. For these two here, I just took a can bottom, and for this one, the same basic thing. So I just come up with a size that would work so I can get these discs. I'm going to show you what we're going to do with all this in just a few moments here. And I did buy some tinsel. We're going to add tinsel to this as well, just to kind of beef it up a little bit. Now, you can also add glitter to it. Now, I use crystal glitter. This is more along the lines of what you would have saw back in the Victorian era. In the Victorian era, they used mica, which was ground up stones to get the glitter. So if you're looking for stuff for sale, vintage ones, you're going to see mica listed sometimes with it. Now these are very popular. I know people that sell similar style of items here. So the last thing that you can do if you're interested is use these hole punches here. And with the same thing with the sheet that I spray painted, I just punched out some of these stars. And you can use these for basically Dresden stars also. Now we've got many of these. I've got circular ones that we can use that I use for some of the circular pieces there. And I've got other snowflakes. These all came from a thrift store. I didn't pay that for them. I think I got a whole bag of these for like six bucks. I got around 20 of these. There's also one of these that you can get, and I do have it, that's a label. So you can hang label tags from these if you plan on selling these at a bazaar or something. But let's show you an example of one of the ornaments that I plan on creating here. So we're just going to take this piece here, Let's see here, let me get some of the other pieces and start putting one together. So this would be the basis for the back side, just for support on this, so that'll make it stiff enough. A lot of these Christmas ornaments were very, very lightweight. They were literally just pieces of paper. So we've got the back, and again, there's silver back there because we used a silver piece. This can go up on top here, just like you see it. It's already fairly fancy. And let's go ahead and put this up there and let's put one of the angels um, in fact let's do this so that's the basis on what I plan on creating now we're gonna glue some other things in here like some tinsel on the back of some of these also so just to give you an idea this is the finished piece almost of what I'm planning on creating now again you will have this to download from down below this is the gist of it though they're really spectacular looking pieces and then you would have the hanging piece which is going to be one of these up at the top we're gonna start back here we're gonna start with this and we're gonna put some tinsel on here so we're gonna take a little bit of this we're just gonna put some tinsel in the background here We're 
just sticking it on there and we're just going to cut it off. We just want just enough on there to make it look like it's shining through. Okay, we're thinning it out a little bit. We're going to put some more over here. It's got that wonderful Christmas smell going on. Let me just cut some more of this off. We're going to just take off the excess. And we just want a ray of it on the top. And anywhere you don't want it, all you got to do is cut it off. We're going to cut some of these stray ones so they're all the same length. We just want to spread it around. And we're going to use this back over. Okay, so let's go ahead and stick this back on there. And you want it to have a uniqueness to it, so you don't want every one to be the same. Let's get some of this extra off. So then we can just sculpt it a little bit. If it's not the way you like it, you can remove the excess, like that one, that one. So there we go. Now we've got that up there. End result is we want it to look with that flashing out the sides like that. Just like that. And we're going to put that on here. Let's see here. Do we like that? Let's go ahead and glue this on here too. There's that. That's that. So now it's getting stiff. We need a little space up here because we're going to put the hanging piece here. For this, all you're going to do is twist it so they're running in different directions. Leave yourself just enough room here. We're going to glob this on. Get it right where we want it again. So far we've got it going on. There's the loop just like I showed you. Then we're going to take this piece like this and we're going to glue it all together. And that's going to be our ornament right here. Now before I glue this, I just want to show you, you can do any kind of combination of whatever you want to do on here. You can mix and match, you can change circles out, you can, whatever you want to do. You can put different people or figures in there also. This can be done any way you want to do it. I could put a girl in there and put a halo over her or anything along that line. The basic design and construction is all the same for almost all of these that I do. So it just depends on what you want to do. Now, I've even cut out borders so we can do, let me see here. Let's try to show you another example. I could put this in the center. I could, say, put an angel there. I could take another one of these and put that there. And then we could add a frame. Let me see. Let me get a bigger frame. And then I could add another frame like this. So now we've got a whole nother ornament here, if that's what I want. So, I mean, there's just so much that you can do with these. 
um, any way you want it. That's why I say this is one of the easiest things you can do. Now we could even add this in here. I could put this like that. Again, this will glue down just perfectly fine. So don't ever worry about any of that kind of stuff. Or I could come in here and just put something like this over the thing and then, yeah, let's do that. Let's put this on here. Then I could put this on top of that one. So it's a little more ornate. I could put the angel there. And then I could also put another little halo over the angel. So that, I mean, there's so much stuff you can do with this basic construction means here. So these are just basics. Everything is interchangeable. You could have gotten another color even in here and put red or something. Some of them are red. You could cut out, um, as I showed you here, and we could put a border on it like that. There's just so many things that you could do, as I said. Just depends on what you want to do with it. Um, add a little bit of texture on it. You can rotate these. I could put this on. I could put that on. Uh, let's see here. Where's another one? In fact, let's do it this way. Let's put this one this one and let's turn this uh, sideways so you've got peaks rotating so you've got a little difference around the edge there and then I could put this in here too or I could come back in and stick this on top the center and then stick an angel on top of that so again there's just so many things you can do with this and they all look authentic to the period because again I'm using a vintage angel from the 1870s on here so let's go ahead and glue this one down here we're just gonna glue it just from the center won't really matter. These were made just with people gluing paper back together back in the day. So there's nothing different. See, it's not so fancy there. We're just going to cover it up, as you saw, with this anyway. So we want the tinsel pointing up so that the rays are on the top half of it. So that's all there is to it. So as you see here, in just a matter of a few moments after we put it together, we've made what does look like a Victorian Christmas ornament. So that's literally all there is to it. Let me just dollop one little spot on here just so we can show you the finished product. And so again, that's the halo coming off the angel. So that's all there is to this, to making these look nice. You can also put like um, roving or spun cotton around these to have like a fluffy white halo around it or a fluffy white cloud as well. So that's literally all there is to making this stuff here. You can also sign them on the back if you want, put a date and information about you, anything like that. Now you can age these to make them look like the vintage originals. I know this piece is original, but you can crinkle up these. You can touch them up with a little bit of dark wash to make them look dirty and aged. Same thing with this. Now there's a way you can do all of this to make it look like vintage Dresden, which I will show you in a future video as well. And some of these things, you could come back in here and add some little details to it, some little Dresden stars, if that's what you want. Whatever you want to do, there's so many options to do this. These are things that sell at Christmas bazaars at our church and things along that line too. So there's a big market for these type of things. Etsy, homemade by Amazon, eBay as well too. Let's show you another one that you can make also. So this will be the second ornament we're going to make. Uh, I don't know if I'll even like this, so we can always change it if we don't like it. So I'm just gonna flatten this out here. Again, we're going to show you how to make the embossed Dresden also shortly. Not in this video, but in a future video. Um, again, we've cut out all these designs. We can use them any way we want and mix and match them. So I can put this on there if I don't like that. Nope, don't like that. Let's try something else. Let's grab this and let's do this. Um, where'd my angel go? Let's try something like this. Let's try something like that right there. So let's see here. Let's line this up so you can see it correctly. So basically I'll stretch this out like a fan. This will be like a rising 
border or sky above it so we're going to glue those together but we'll also need to stiffen the back of this piece here so let's put a backer on these again i've got two colors so just decide what you want i'm going to put the gold one on the back here let's just build this up just like we did the other one there's nothing to this i'm telling you this is one of the easiest things you can do to make your own christmas ornaments and i should have turned it the other way there we go yeah see it's got a little coloration off there no worry we're going to cover this up in a minute here too so then we're going to put this here just like that so let's go ahead and glue some glue So then we're going to do what I showed you. We're just going to put this right about there. Any of that extra glue will come off. No big deal. So there we go. We got the start of it here. And as we said, we're going to do this. So it's a halo again. So that's going to be the basis of this ornament here. There's nothing really specific you have to do to say, hey, it looks Victorian. We've already got, in fact, let's just glue this just a little bit more so we don't have any issues. There we go. Now you could have put a bigger piece of cardboard in the back. No big deal. Let's let that dry a little bit before we lay it back down. Let's, in fact, we need to get a pipe cleaner, basically, is what these are, so we can hang it. So let's grab one of these and see which color we want to make it. Now, these are shortenable, so I could shorten it if I don't like the gold on there. Uh, do I like the gold on there? Eh, gold's okay, I guess. So let's just twist this back around. We're going to shorten these. Just cut them off. A regular pair of scissors works on these. And then this is going to be the back of it there. Now we can glue something over this so you don't see it. Just something like that. Um, let's, in fact, let's just do that real quick here. Let's stick that down on there. And then we're going to just quickly go over this. Okay, so now all we've got to do is get these two pieces together. Figure out where you want it. That's all there is to it. Any of the extra glue, it peels off really easily, so don't worry about that. Let's just line this up to make sure we know right where we want it. So we're gonna do that. We're just gonna put a little tiny dab. So there we go with that. And if you wanna make this even a little fancier, we could add something like this. Just like that. In fact, I think I actually like that better. So we're going to glue this piece onto the back here, too. In fact, let's do it from the other side so we line it up better. So now we've got that added on there. So now all we're going to do is glue it onto the last part. Okay, so let's just add just a little more decoration to this as well. I'm going to take some of the pipe cleaner basically again. We got a little string. Let's get that out of there. And we're going to bend one and fold it around it. So let's see if I can't bend it. Okay, there we've got it bent. And we're just going to wrap it around like that. Shouldn't take much to glue this. Okay, let's just do this. Let's do that. Now this is clear, so you shouldn't see it. We're just going to hold that for a minute there. Let's see if we got this piece ready here. Let's smash it together. 
Okay, so that's the main piece that's going to hold this all on. So we're just going to have to slip this back on here. And then slide it over the back. And then there she bees. Uh, we could glue this on, but I think that should be just fine and all honesty. Maybe I'll just glue it right there. Just so we know it's not going to come off. And then that's the added little sparkle to this one here. That kind of sets it all off there because it matches what we got up there as well. So that's it on this one here. You can see it's just something out of just paper, nothing fancy. The only hard to get piece is this one here, which again, I have a link to it down below. Now we're going to add to this one also, and I'm going to add some of this around the edge here. We're going to get some and twist them together. Just take some of these. And again, I bought them in these big packets right here. So we're going to twist some of these together and make a rope kind of border. So we're just going to wrap it around. And don't worry if you bend something on here. These are going to look old as what you're wanting them to. So there we go. Let's just do this. Let's twist it together. And I twist these together and add more than just the one because that way it'll have some better gluing spots instead of just a thin little line. So let's just fold this around and see where we want to get this. Might take you a minute to get the hang of holding on to these, but once we got it, we can pull these off. And then we're going to twist these up. And then we're going to add some more to this to make it thicker. So that's the gist on that. So we'll start here. And we're going to wrap some more around this. Again, this is bendable, so we can just bend it, wrap it around it. And at the end of the day, we will have a thicker chain to stick around it. A little more sparkle to it, I guess we could say. Again, these things are really cheap. I only paid like a dollar or something for each bundle of these. So for just a few dollars, you can create this. The doilies and the paint are probably the most. The paint itself should be enough to do, say, 30 of these if you're sparse with the paint or depending on um, how you spray. But uh, again, this is something anybody can do as you see here. So then we're just going to fit this back on here. And that's literally about it. And there we are with the finished products. As you can see, they look very nice. They look professionally well done. Something you could see in almost any craft store, Christmas bazaar in the country, or you could see them being sold on eBay, Amazon, as I said, or Etsy. Well, there we are. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully it gave you an eye opener on how to make some very unique, very nice vintage style ornaments from the Victorian era. I do have another channel if you're unaware. I am heading towards 15,000 subscribers on the Auction Professor. And I sell items just like this on that store. I sell originals. I sell a lot of die cuts and things like that. If you're interested in seeing items that sell as well, you can check out the Auction Professor. But if you haven't subscribed to the channel here again, I am Don, the Art Professor, and we're going to show you some more of these in the next couple videos. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, please subscribe below, as well as hit the like button for me. Thanks, and I hope you enjoyed the video.